Today I'm going to show you how to achieve a far greater degree of realism and visual impact in your gravity sketch models, both in VR and on your screenshots. So here I have a fairly complete exterior model. It has uh, also a complete interior and I want to put it in a much more realistic environment uh, and give it that sense of realism visual impact. So to give a quick overview of some of the environment settings, um, right now I'm just in the basic studio setting. Um, I can also click on flat color and you can see I'm just in a blank white space where I can maybe customize the horizon color, the, the ground tone and the sky tone. And you can see all of a sudden that gives it a bit more uh, warm and cool contrast, um, a bit more realism. Having that dark horizon gives it a nice, um, a nice horizon line along the body side. I also have the, the skyline here. This is like a desert landscape environment that gives you a, a kind of highly reflective surface on the body. We also have the zebra stripes for surface evaluation. And we have the, the outdoor forest environment. But none of these really give you that sense of, of visual realism. And overall, the image has this really cartoony sort of look to it. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to give your models a much higher degree of visual impact and realism in Gravity Sketch, both in VR and in screenshots, similar to what you'd get in uh, other visualization software. So I'll start with the environment. Uh, so right now I have it set to a custom gradient environment. Uh, and here I'm able to control the ground tone, the mid tone, and the sky tone. Uh, however, um, I also have um, the ability to bring in a custom HDR environment. So if I slide the switch to the right, I get the ability to choose a custom HDR. Here I have a bunch of HDR environments that I've saved. Uh, so basically what you can do is go to any HDR website, download the file, and then upload it to your landing pad account, or you can download it to your uh, documents folder in the gravity sketch subfolder and in the HDR subfolder. And that will make these environments available to you. So for example, I'm gonna pick um, Ostrich Road 4K. So if I click on that, so you'll see the vehicle already looks a lot more realistic. However, there's a couple of major problems. The first is that the car appears to be floating in space above the road. It doesn't look like it's actually sitting on the road. And that's because it's, uh, we're in this spherical HDR environment. Uh, there really is nothing underneath the vehicle to plant it. So to address this, I've created some uh, reference images that will allow me to give the car that greater sense of being planted on the road. First of all, I've created this uh, soft shadow that I can put underneath the vehicle. Um, this is just something I created in Photoshop using an airbrush. And then I've also created an image of the floor of the HDR environment itself. And again, in Photoshop, I, uh, I put it on a transparent PNG layer, blurred out the edges. And so what I'm going to do, um, and you'll see I've also put the baked shadow directly onto the floor environment. Uh, this is a this is a very large 7K image, so um, it has a very high resolution. So when I go to scale this up, uh, I'm basically just going to scale this up uh, so that the shadow is roughly the length of the vehicle, align it to the mirror plane, then using the precision move tool, rotate it 90 degrees and move it down below the vehicle. You can see it's a little bit large, so I'm just gonna go in and scale it back down a little bit so that the tires match the shadow. So now the vehicle is sitting on an actual piece of pavement with a, with a soft uh, sh cast shadow beneath the vehicle. 
And this is giving it a much more uh, planted, on the ground appearance. I can enhance that shadow with the PNG image that I created. Setting it just above the vehicle. So now I'm going to address the second issue that I see with rendering gravity sketch vehicles in a custom HDR environment. And that is, that is the material of the body color. It looks like more like a metallic chrome. It doesn't look like a paint. And in other visualization software, you have this ability to really customize the base coat and the clear coat and the metal flake and all of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this, uh, put this ground image on a floor layer and I'll lock that. And then I've created this clear coat layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the body and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to shift it up, let's say some even number. Put it onto this clear coat layer. And then I'm going to use the offset tool. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select thicken offset. I'm going to switch to offset. And I can actually define the exact offset of the body. I'm going to offset by one millimeter. So I'm then going to click bake offset and that's going to effectively create a duplicate surface. Then I'm just going to uh, select the original surface and delete it. And I'm going to assign a clay material, a white clay material. So now I'm going to move the body back down over the original surface. So you'll see now I have this perfect exact offset on its own layer. So at this point, what I can do, because it's on its own layer, I can now use the layer transparency to adjust the um, transparency. <clears throat> so now that I have the secondary layer of clear coat, I can now reduce the transparency and start to customize the appearance of the shader. So now it has this much more metallic paint look to it, like a bright silver metallic paint. And I can, I can also play around with the, the brightness of the original layer, make it maybe a little bit darker. So I still have the contrast. So you can see the difference from this very dark chrome appearance to this very soft metallic paint finish. And then also using uh, our environment settings, I can just take the flashlight and I can customize the direction of light to really enhance some of the surfaces. So this gives me a, a high degree of control over the, the realism and the image quality. If you're on a tethered device, you'll also see cast shadows. So for example, on the interior, I can turn on cast shadows and now I have you can see the shadow, for example, of the steering wheel hitting the floor. Um, you can see the A-pillar casting a shadow across, across the door panel, across the seat. If I turn off the glass layer, and you can see I can, I can actually achieve some very, very high quality images of the interior as well as the exterior. And so that is how you can achieve a visual quality to your gravity sketch models, similar to what you would achieve in other visualization software. But with the added benefit of being able to see the car immersively in full scale in real time and collaborate with others.